Has Theresa May broken the class ceiling or just cracked it? For the Conservative Party, class was more impermeable than gender, race and sexuality, themes which dominated the early phases of Tory modernisation. But now, Mrs May is connecting with parts of the country the Conservatives haven't reached in decades. Scotland, the North, areas that have disdained the party since the Labour landslide of 1945. Out are the posh boys who don't know the price of milk. In comes a woman who transcends left and right, rich and poor, north and south, somewhere and anywhere, even the warring tribes of leave and remain with her promise of strong and stable leadership. So far, this is cutting through. The polls predict a landslide. So has Theresa May managed to bring about the classless society where her predecessors failed, overcoming the boundaries and divisions that have defined Britain? Or are we still, like this photo, stuck in the 1930s? Yeah, Richard, you asked if, if she'd broken it or cracked the class ceiling. I think it's cracked. Um, I don't think it's broken. And, and I say this because I grew up in the northeast, which is one of the two areas in the country where she's just about pulling level. She's got a, she's pulled back 22 points. But historically, huge. Yes, it's, it's huge. But historically, people in the northeast, and I know because I'm from there, would rather stick pins in their eyes than vote Tory. But but I remember, I'm old enough to remember 1979, when just before Thatcher came to power, we had had the winter of discontent. There were the unions that had crippled the country. There were there were rubbish was in the streets. The lights weren't on. And I remember saying to my father what are you going to vote and I was kind of young and voted Labour and uh, and my dad said I'm voting for Thatcher and I said why what are you doing and he said because she's a leader and she's gonna fix things for now and for now we need a leader and I think we're in exactly that position right now I don't think the North East will stay uh, Tory I think it will vote Tory this time I think I think that people are voting for now for this period of time um, and I don't think it's permanent and I think people in the North East will go back and uh, will go back to Labour when you have a credible Labour party. Do you think this is Theresa May's classless manifesto? I, I think she's reaching in there yeah I mean the, st the stuff you know I never like to see anything being taken off pensioners however what she's doing now is she, she, she's gonna she's not gonna she's gonna make people not have to sell their homes if they need social care which I think is fantastic she's she's saying that she's gonna cut winter fuel payments for people for, for pensions who on pay 40 percent tax which i think is i think most people on 40 percent tax would say yeah okay she wants to build more council houses yeah it sounds a bit like a labor manifesto and she's she's inroading into areas that the yeah. working class people live afro is a land grab for the for to just el eliminate the labor vote in labor heartlands well it's definitely what she's trying to do i mean i would question what you said about whether she's transcended the leave remain divide i think really the way that she's managed to capture the working class vote is she by does. is by you know advocating essentially whatever we call it, a hard Brexit, but, but being strong on Brexit and that we're not going back from that. Um, Jeremy Corbyn said something which made me laugh, which uh, I'll show you now, about how much she really has moved the Tories on from their posh roots. When people talk about the 1970s uh, and our manifesto doing that, I, I simply say that the other major party contesting this election is really, really forward-looking. They're going to bring back fox hunting and grammar schools. That sounds really 21st century, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, let's not get carried away on this being a kind of manifesto for workers' rights. And actually, on the workers' rights parts of the manifesto, you know, promising um, measures that are designed to appeal to workers, I think this has to be looked at in a context. Her government um, introduced in coalition tribunal fees for employment cases, which have seen a 70% drop in employment tribunal cases, which means whatever rights governments give workers, they basically can't enforce them. So I think, you know, we're going to talk about housing, I know, later, but I think a lot of it sounds good and it sounds like it's going to appeal to working class voters, but how much substance they're going to see in it, I don't know. Can I just ask Nick something? Yeah. Nick, I mean, do you think the reason why she seems she's the Heineken politician at the moment is because Labour is in disarray, mm. it's clearly going to regroup after mm. this election. The Lib Dems, despite my membership, are not <laughs> building, well, no, actually, building it's, it's a since you announced <laughs> that you were joining, they were actually trundling along. 
yeah. and you've had the effect of taking them off the edge of a people, cliff. People, wherever they are, you know, whatever class, are holding their noses and going to vote for Theresa May because she seems to have a good offer. Well, a couple of things, um, I, and I defer uh, in a moment to Greg because he pointed out that in a way he thought, and there's three weeks to go, we should say that, not least for broadcasting reasons, there are three weeks to go and a lot can happen and... Many, many more banana skins, I'm sure, are coming their way. But I remember Greg saying a few weeks ago, he sensed that the, really he didn't know whether the Labour Party actually wanted to get power. He thought they'd rather be a party of opposition. And where you say Mrs May has cracked the, the ceiling, whatever the expression was, I think she's been helped quite a lot by the current Labour leadership. Yeah. I don't think they've helped themselves at all, speaking to a little bit uh, of what you say. So, yes, she's, she certainly is obviously a skilled politician. I think she's been helped by what would appear, three weeks ago, a very weak opposition that is way out of touch and a Lib Dem party that, for whatever reason, just can't seem to fire uh, on all cylinders. But I was almost celebrating. I was almost celebrating because I thought at last we were going to get through one of your conversations and we wouldn't touch on the B word. No, not Boris. I haven't. Not Boris. Brexit. I haven't mentioned No, well, you talked about I the haven't. leave and remain and I noticed that. And can I just take it from you that the YouGov poll this yes. week that we can now, Rachel Johnson, please, please say that you are in such a minority, courtesy of YouGov, we can tell you, 45% yeah. of people are so-called hard leavers, 23% of people are what YouGov call relievers. they voted to remain, they now believe the government has a duty to carry out Brexit, 68% of the population support the damn process. Will you now just give it away, Rachel, before you Don't go to grid? It. Just tell me no, you'll give it away. I mean, I'm, you'll I give it away. I'm, I'm known as a hard play. remainer because... I'm not going to be one of these people who just assumes that it's going, Brexit is like death and taxes. You've just got to lie back and expect it to happen. It's not going to... Ha Nick, somebody's got to stand up oh, for the Christ young of what? this that country whose who's futures are going to be made poorer by Let's this referendum. Let's get back to yes. what we were discussing, no, which yes. was class, really. Yes. Um, uh, Greg, can I ask you my question, which is, do you think this is a honeymoon period for May, for Mrs May, and that she's... she's almost universally popular now, yeah, all, if you look at the polls, but it's going to be short -lived. Well, all politicians, other than Mr Trump, have, ho have, have <laughs> honeymoons. She's clearly having a honeymoon. She's, she's blessed by having a Labour leadership that, it, that is not uh, universally popular. I think it would be, be <laughs> polite, um, given that it's an election period. Um, I also think you've got to understand that class... I mean, the working class, the numbers of people in what is defined as the working class has been in decline for 20 years. That actually we've become a middle class society. Yeah. And I think where people voted on class basis has changed. And I don't think it's, yeah. it's so much. I think if you're then faced with uh, Mrs May, who clearly didn't like all those old Etonians who were, who were running the country, you know, people like your brother who's still there but by chance. Uh, but, it, you know, somehow there was, there was something about... I mean, if anyone had told me... What do you mean when... he's there by chance? Actually, can I just put in a word for him? <laughs> he del almost delivered Downing Street for Mrs May. He's not there by chance at well, all. Well, he delivered Downing Street. He stood down, down there labelling Mrs May oh, to thought... become leader of the party, for yes. pity's sake, Well, he Greg. stood down for the for strange reasons, though, didn't he? Right, he didn't okay. Sorry, he I didn't, that off my chest. He didn't Carry stand on. down because he wanted Mrs May. Let's kid, let's not kid ourselves. Oh. Right, let's anyway, moving on. But, no, I, I, for, uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, the, the class-based society has changed. And, and people don't necessarily vote on class in, in the way they did 30 years ago. But, 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 but don't, don't we just think we pick leaders for our times, you know? This is a time when we need a very strong leader to go into Brexit. And I think the people of this country, working class, middle class and, and upper class, have decided she is the one. Because for some weird reason, not weird reason, I know what the reason is, she, she has a foot in all camps. She, she is not one of the eaten people. She, she looks and can sound working class when she wants to, but she has a foot in the other camps. Also, she's the only leader of a political party in this country who has experience of Europe, who has experience of what dealing she, with Europe. She doesn't, well, she, she's so home well, Jeremy, Cor Jeremy Corbyn doesn't. I see, only the leader. Yes, okay. Jeremy Corbyn doesn't, Tim Farron doesn't, and she, she knows how the EU works in a way those two I'm don't. I'm not sure that's true. Class. I'm not sure that's well, true. Okay. I would say she's, class, she's, she's, well, class, she's classic Middle England. Okay, she's I, classic yeah. Middle I think England, she's talking class about, less. When she talks about the jams, they're just about managing. She's saying she understands how... Yeah, she's not working. You think she's No, no, I said she has a foot, I said she can straddle both camps. It's just that we have kind of different class categories in a way now. You know, the traditional class boundaries of upper class, middle class and working class are obviously becoming redundant in politics, but there are different ways of dividing people by their circumstances, by their background, which do still seem to have some salience. And she's not universally popular yeah, in all of those but categories. let's not kid ourselves. I mean, the, this is an election that Labour could have won. 
I believe. It's an Two election ago, that like they the could have won. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've gone down with the rabbit deep, hole today, Nick. With a, <laughs> Even we're with, a, no. with a proper leadership. With a proper leadership. <laughs> this is not. But unfortunately, they've got a leadership that hasn't got the support of even their traditional voters. And therefore, they, I, one suspects they'll lose. But as you say, there's three weeks to go. There's so three weeks to go, we must say that. The manifesto, though, was an exercise, presumably, in trying to shore up their traditional vote, wasn't well, it, that we saw man, in Bradford this week? Well, parts, I mean, I think there are a lot of people who have voted Labour in their life who liked parts of the manifesto. Mm. Can I ask you They just that? don't think they can we're, deliver it. We've got, to, we've got time oh. to move on. Oh, oh. oh. sorry, oh. sorry, oh. sorry. Oh. sorry. Oh. Quick, this we'll could go on and on.